you think of when you think of artificial intelligence or AI? Her? AlphaGo? Some robot? That may or may not enslave or kill us one day? <laughs> well, since this past January, as a way to teach myself about AI, I've been attempting to think of an AI as an artist. I'd like to share my exploration of this topic and show you an artificially intelligent artist that I've found. But let's start with a specific and hopefully illuminating example of machine learning, which is a subset of AI. You can build a machine learning classifier that will learn how to distinguish between images from different classes. So for example, you can give a classifier the apparently arcane task of distinguishing between me and Malia Obama. <laughs> <laughs> the goal is that you'll be able to give the classifier some image of me, and it'll decide that it's me rather than Malia. It's not actually using a brain, though, like the one drawn, but it's similar. Humans use networks of neurons that look like this to decide how to respond to sensory input. So a computer can use a network of artificial neurons that use math instead of neurotransmission to, in this case, decide whether I'm myself or not. They often look closer to this. Just note that my drawings are not accurate. They're meant to be symbols. So first, it will perform very poorly. It doesn't know anything, so it's just randomly guessing. But basically, if you give it a photo, a guess is wrong, and then you tell it that the guess is wrong, then it'll learn from it. It'll modify the ways the operations work in the neural network so that they'll produce the right guesses. And if you give it tons and tons of photos and keep repeating this process of having it guess and correcting it and having the network update itself, then it'll learn to be increasingly accurate. And that's roughly, in less than two minutes, how machine learning works. And similar approaches are being applied to making art. Here's a popular one. But generally, you feed a machine tons of art, and then it learns how to generate art. But let's go back to 1907 in some alternate world where Pablo Picasso is born a machine learning model. And he tries to make art, and it looks like this. And instead of starting a new art movement called Cubism, he'd be told, no, this is wrong. Good art is supposed to look like this. So go revise your neural network and try again. That's problem number one with the current approach to computer-generated art. It's discouraging truly original art because it considers something that isn't similar to what we've seen before to be wrong. Number two is this. The fact that producing art that looks indistinguishable from real human art is a strictly visual evaluation of success. It's all still really impressive and maybe the intended goals were met, but I set out to design a system with this goal. To create art that's not solely imitating existing art and that means something. So I present to you Arthur. This is Arthur. 952 lines of code that I wrote, and then tried really hard to make look nice on a single slide. <laughs> but what's actually happening here? Let's revisit this example. For Arthur, the input, instead of photos of me, is a rating of artwork. A 1 means relatively good, and a 0 means relatively bad. The output, instead of my name or Malia's, is art that would achieve the specified rating. So we'll fix the input at 1, and Arthur will create art that would earn a rating of 1, or is relatively good. And if the resulting art is actually a 0, then Arthur will go back and update the neural network. Who decides the ratings? People. Because who decides whether art is good or not in the real world? In 1962, Andy Warhol made this more expressionistic style piece on the left, and this clean-edged version on the right. His friends preferred this one, so he went with it. Other people's subjective opinions influenced his stylistic choices. So why are existing AI systems using old artwork to evaluate new artwork? Why not use people to evaluate it and positively reinforce favorable styles? Back to Arthur, the output art here is actually represented as parameters. There are about 20 of them. For example, one is number of colors, how many different colors are being used. One is color variance, how similar are the different colors being used. There are some relating to sharpness versus smoothness versus blurriness, etc. Basically, rather than giving the system examples of artwork and breaking it down, I'm giving it the basic tools of art, lines, colors, composition, value, and having the art be built up from that, which provokes originality. How exactly are these parameters being used? Well, let's pretend that Arthur is an AI version of Georgia O'Keeffe. Here's some of her work. 
It's likely that Arthur, as O'Keefe, believes that a small amount of content is best, one or two flowers. Note that I said one or two flowers. It could even be three. The point is that no parameter ever fixes to a single value, but rather a range like this. In this case, it's a range of small values that Arthur will choose from when it makes art. And this range is what changes as people rate the art. But what if Arthur learns that art with the high variance of colors is no better than monochromatic art? Then the range will stay completely open, like this. So now that we have a style figured out, what actual content will be depicted in the art? Well, when given a theme, Arthur looks at semantic links. Semantic links connect words with related meanings. For example, if the main subject is tree, semantic links can be visualized in a web like this. Tree is linked to leaf because trees have leaves, plant because trees are plants, forest because trees are in forests, etc. And then forest may be linked to rainforest because it's a type of forest, and natural landscape because it's a natural landscape. This is analogous to associations humans make in their head that could influence their art. If I'm asked to paint a piece with the theme home, I might paint my house, but you won't paint my house because why would you? <laughs> you might think of the phrase, home is where the heart is, so you paint an anatomically correct heart because you like science. Humans form these links based on lived experience. Arthur accesses semantic links from Wikidata. It's basically Wikipedia for semantic modeling. Anyone can contribute. So Wikidata is emulating the world for Arthur. And all of the semantic links that people define on Wikidata become a collective experience of the world that Arthur uses to find the images that are somehow linked to the theme to incorporate into the art. But how far from the initial subject will Arthur explore in the semantic web? And how much content will it look for? Or will any of that content be repeated? And how will it be sized and arranged on the canvas? Well, these kinds of questions are answered with more parameters that Arthur tries to learn the optimal ranges for. But finally, here are some of the artwork that Arthur produced. First, three pieces for the subject music. Note that the two on the left use the same picnic image, and it looks very different in each, and it's interesting because I tried to find the original image in Wikidata for comparison, but I couldn't. I didn't try too hard, but it wasn't directly linked to music, and it also wasn't under park or picnic, and I can't reverse Google and search it because it's so distorted in these. So I have no idea where this image came from, but Arthur does, and its use was deliberate. Here's some for the subject home. They're each emulating subjective interpretations of home, only emulating it and limited by the fact that Wikidata is inherently objective because you're only allowed to add links based on facts. How do you allow a computer to form its own unique experience and knowledge of the world? I don't know, the world and humans are too complex. So I decided to explore a world that's simpler than the actual world, but more interesting and less objective than Wikidata. And thus, Ringo was born. Because this time I equipped the system with the experience that Ringo Starr sang about in the Beatles song, Yellow Submarine. <laughs> so let's build another semantic web. Well, Ringo lived in a yellow submarine. Actually, we all did, I guess. <laughs> and he was born in the town where he was born, where there also lived a man who sailed the sea. And then they sailed to the sun, but he also later lived beneath the sea, etc. <laughs> And then we link stills from the music video to build his visual knowledge. Here's the web represented in code. I gave him the same parameter ranges as Arthur because I didn't want to restart the learning process. But still, Ringo produces art about the sea and man that's imaginatively different from what Arthur produces about the sea and man. But what's the point of all this? Because I think it's all clever and kind of funny, but it's very odd and very limited. And with this project in general, I can think of more flaws and more flawed fixes for the flaws, it's all flawed. <laughs> but so are humans. Arthur and Ringo have very oddly limited knowledge bases. Arguably humans do too. Human evaluation for machine learning is very slow and subjective. Isn't it similar to the development of human artists? I highly doubt that the system will ever converge on parameter ranges, but maybe art warrants a new goal for machine learning. What is the goal here? Maybe we don't need computers to be great artists. Maybe it's randomness that's also intentional and guided that 
can spark inspiration for human artists. Or maybe I've just discovered a new artistic medium for myself called computation. Flawed means not perfect, and there's no such thing as perfect art because everything about art, the making of it and the viewing and evaluation, it's all subjective. What if we're missing out on the potential to design more successful and more innovative machines by embracing all of the flaws that make us human and that make us creative? Because with art, being human is superior to being superhuman. And even if none of this is the answer, the way that art is being reduced to code needs to be challenged. Challenged by anyone who's curious and has an idea. Thank you.